Well, I do. So is Alberta the new hotspot in Canada? Everywhere you look, young people are kissing Ontario goodbye to live in more affordable provinces like Alberta, and it's causing a mass exodus. It's no secret that Toronto ain't cheap. And for many people, the appeal to leave is only getting more enticing with insane home prices killing the dream of home ownership. The rental market continues to soar, and now some are even questioning if Toronto is losing its edge after the closure of some of the city's notable entertainment spots due to long-lasting construction and gentrification. And now it also has many people wondering, could Calgary become the next hotspot? Bam, another spot gone. Another spot gone in this city. It's like nonstop. And for a subway station that literally is going to take four years, so they say, to build. Fam, 2027, that's how long you guys are going to have construction at Bathurst between Queen and King? God bless. What do you guys think is busier? Eglinton West or Bathurst between King, Queen and King? Like... Let's be real here. Like, imagine after a Raptors game, after a Leafs game, you got to get out the city. <laughs> God bless, yo. We're, we're in for it. The city's going down. God bless. Welcome to hell. Hey, it's VG, and thanks for watching. So what does the future of Ontario, and more specifically Toronto, look like if there's more pros to leaving than staying? We're going to get into that, but before we do, I need you to do a few things. Like, subscribe to this channel, tap the notification bell, hit the like button, and make sure to follow us across all of our social media. The details are in the description below. So how many people are actually leaving Ontario? Well, only halfway through 2022, Ontario saw 49,000 people leave for other provinces. This makes Ontario the province with the highest loss to interprovincial migration. It also means 2022 was the worst year for this kind of population loss since 1971. That's according to Stats Canada. On top of that, less people are coming to the province from other parts of Canada than usual. The data shows the most preferred province this year was Alberta with an inflow of nearly 10,000 people. I live in Calgary, Alberta. I moved here from Toronto about three years ago. So I lived in Toronto for about three years. At that point we were like, oh, we should buy a house here. And you know, the cost of housing in Toronto is astronomical. We had a realtor help us with our rental search and our max budget was never big enough. Even when we were renting, never mind buying. So let's talk about the Alberta advantage. With all the subway ads, TikTok videos, and news reports all promoting the benefits of leaving to go live in Alberta, it's easy to understand why young people would take the bite. My Birkin, another Birkin. But what makes these two Birkins different? And what small feature about them divides the Hermes collector community? The Alberta is calling website says, in Toronto, most of your income goes towards home ownership. It takes, listen to this, 69% of your salary to own a home in the six. But in Edmonton, on average, it takes below one third of your salary to own a home, meaning you can get a home in Alberta for less than 50% the cost that you would in Toronto. And let's not even get started on taxes. In Alberta, you only pay 5% GST, compared to Ontario's 13% HST. Plus, due to a lot of resources like oil and gas in Alberta, they have an abundance of job opportunities. But is Alberta really ready for the major culture change that may come as more Torontonians decide to move west? Not only do many Ontarians speak and think differently, a lot of them also vote differently too. As people move to that province, Albertans need to be ready for a shift in values. For example, Alberta is considered the conservative heartland of Canada. Ontario, on the other hand, is known to be much more liberal in how they vote, especially voters in the Toronto area. And that also affects their social values too. Now, I'm not saying there are no liberals across Alberta. There definitely is. But I'm just saying that there's a larger concentration of people with liberal values in Toronto compared to Alberta. And that's partly the reason why, despite unaffordability, some people in Toronto 
don't want to leave the city. Now, while the province of Alberta promises it's a place for everyone, some people of color have reached out to our show, expressing they don't see Alberta as a place for them. But not everyone shares those experiences. In fact, some people of color who have moved to Alberta or are from there say the province is beautiful and welcoming. Well, I do. So what is the solution for Toronto if people continue leaving? As poverty climbs in Ontario and more and more people rely on social services to keep their families going, what do cities like Toronto look like in the long run? What would it take to make Toronto a livable city? And when I say a livable city, obviously you can live in the city, but you can't live in the city unless you make a certain amount of money. You will not be able to afford rent. You will not be able to buy a house. You will not be able to buy food. You will not be able to amuse yourself. You will not be able to partake in any kind of recreation unless you have money in this city. I feel like Toronto may be on a dangerous trajectory right now. How many more neighborhoods are we gonna gentrify? How many more ways are we gonna exclude folks who do not have money? Is there anywhere you can go in this city for free other than a park and maybe a public library? Everywhere you go in Toronto, you gotta, you gotta spend cash. And I mean, I look around and the poverty is getting worse. We are on a scary trajectory right now. I don't know how this story ends. So we've got an affordable housing crisis and we've had it for decades now. Uh, we continue to have people in office that don't have a vision or will to actually change any of this. I walk with food, I walk with blankets, I walk with money, none of that is anything more than a band-aid solution to the droves of unhoused people we have in this city. And so I'm just throwing this out there because even as I have good days and I feel really good about life, I look around and there are people sleeping on grades. It, it doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. So what would it take to make Toronto livable again? Should the government tackle Airbnbs more aggressively and put in place stricter rent controls? Or should companies start paying their employees more based on a city's cost of living? Maybe the government needs to make access to education like post-secondary more affordable. Or does this require people to vote differently? I don't know. It's hard to say exactly what Toronto and the province will look like years from now, but if things continue the way they're going, Ontario may become a place where only the rich can afford to live. But we want to hear from you. How can we make Ontario, specifically cities like Toronto, affordable places to live again? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Hey BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel. And listen to this, we have more great content for you like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.